Are you someone who loves working with Excel and appreciates all the cool features and functions it can provide you with? We can use functions to calculate things, use VBA to automate tasks, and communicate and visualize our analysis to stakeholders who don't have a strong technical background. Excel is even a popular tool used by data analysts at their own work. But, despite all the wonderful things that Excel can do, one of the biggest issues it faces these days, especially in the data field, is that it cannot handle large data sets. And by large, I'm talking about millions of rows of data. You see, when Excel first came out back in 1997 for Windows, the maximum number of rows it could handle in a single worksheet was around 16,000. But when Excel 2007 came out, the maximum number of rows it could handle jumped up to a little over 1 million rows and it hasn't really changed since then. But you know what's amazing? Even 1 million rows of data is too small when your data analyst working with multiple millions or even billions of rows of data. So what can you do to fix this problem? Well, back in 2016, Microsoft introduced something called Power Query in the Excel Data tab. And Power Query is an ETL tool that allows you to prepare and transform large volumes of data. With Power Query, Excel's row limit does not matter as you'll be capable of handling tens of millions of rows of data limited only by how much resources your computer can handle. Power Query can be a data analyst's best friend when it comes to preparing and transforming datasets. So let me show how you can use Power Query to transform and load a 3GB CSV file with over 8.35 million rows of data into the Excel data model. So in this folder here, I have the CSV file called NYPD Historical Complaint Data. And this is a gigantic file that's over 3 gigabytes in size. Now, if you're wondering how I got this data set, it comes from New York City's open data website, which I'll link in the description below. But if we try to open this CSV file up in Excel, you'll notice that like nothing pops up here because the data set is just like too big for I'm um, to like open up in Excel since there's like over like 8 million rows compared to Excel's 1 million row limit. But another way to open this, which I've mentioned before, is to use Power Query. So let's open up a new Excel file. And if we go to the data tab here, go to get data from file and then you want to select the from text slash csv since it's a csv file and a dialog box will pop up where you have to like select the folder that contains the csv file which i've placed in here so if we select this option here here it's connecting to like the data set now and we have this menu here right where it's going to show a preview of the data set and we have the option to load the transform the data um, or click cancel in this case i'm going to click on transform first since like we also want to like clean the data set before loading it the transform data and we get this power query editor popped up here containing all the columns from the data set and it's only showing the first 1000 rows since again it's like a lot of rows to go through now one big thing we have to do once we load it to the power query editor is that we have to clean the data set which is something that every data analyst does and they spend a lot of time doing it as well so to clean the data let's start by removing all the extra columns we don't we don't really need for this video and to do that we can go to the choose columns um section here click on choose columns and then this menu will like allow us to keep all the columns that we selected or check mark. So if we uncheck this, we just have to choose the columns we want to keep. And I have a list of that already. So the first column we'll keep is the report date, which is the RPD date here or DT. Then the next one will be the borrow name here. And then the next one will be the law, like the category, um, the crime category basically here. So up next will be related to suspect info, which is suspect age, um, race, and sex. And the victim info, which is victim age, race, and sex. And we click on OK. And that instantly deleted all the columns that we didn't check mark and include the only and the ones we want only. So next let's fix the header names so that they're easier to read for whoever uses this table. 
and we can just like to do that to do that we can just simply double click each header name here and just call this like report date um and i'll call this one here the offense level the borrow name so after we fix the column header names we want to remove any duplicate rows from all the columns and we can do that by selecting all the columns and then go to remove rows and select remove duplicates and once that's done you'll see that we have a remove duplicates here in the applied steps showing us that this step has been completed up next we need to find a way to handle for missing values so this one we have to be a bit more careful with are the data missing because someone forgot to enter the data into a spreadsheet or are they missing because there's just no um, data for it at all and if there was very few missing values then we probably could delete the rows containing it but since there's a lot of missing values as shown in this null value here that could lead to like a skew in our analysis leading to biases which we don't want and we can check for if a column has a missing value by just going to this filter box here and seeing if null appears which in this column it doesn't but it does appear in the column from borrow name all the way to let's see victim age range here um, which shows the null value here after from victim race and afterwards there's no null value so it's not um, a missing value we see that there's an unknown value here but that was entered on purpose though so um, it doesn't count as a missing value so when looking at the columns we can see that there's a lot of missing values in like the suspect age range suspect race and so on and so on right so deleting the rows would be a bad idea since that could just like skew our analysis, analysis by a lot but what we can do is that we can either leave, leave them alone as missing values or just like change them like what i do is i change them from null value to na for not available um to show that there was no data there and we can do that by selecting the entire columns um that has the missing value and then we can right click oh whoops so um, let's select the entire columns with the missing values and hopefully this doesn't get messed up this time and then right click and then do a replace values and we want to type out the parentheses null and the parentheses and then replace it with not na for not available and click ok and all the null values get replaced by na which will be our unique identifier to see if, if a value was missing or not so the next thing we have to be on the lookout for is incorrect data type an incorrect data type is something where like a number um, is being treated as a text when you want it to be as an integer or a date is being treated as a number and if you have an incorrect data type so let's say we have the number five that's being treated as a text and another number like 10 that's being treated like an integer if you try to add two different those two numbers but have different data types together you'll get an error basically and if you want to like fix for the um if you want to like check for incorrect data types you can just like go through each column here and then check what the data type is here this one shows date which is correct and everything else should show text as the data type which it does the last thing to look out for is incorrect values basically any data entered into this um data set that does not belong there for example you might have a negative number for an age or like if we look at the report date column here we might have letters instead of numbers uh, when i was looking through the spreadsheet i didn't notice any incorrect values so that means that we can move on to the last thing to look out for so far which will be white space so this is mostly for text data types we want to make sure that there are no extra white space in our text so that everything is standardized if there are white spaces then that could lead to a different values of the same thing skewing our analysis and if you want to like fix for the white space then we can just select the columns that are text and then we can right click on the column and select transform then we can use the two functions here trim and clean those should remove any non-printable characters that doesn't belong in the data set so we can do trim first and then we can select clean next 
and all the white space in the data type should be clean now. Now that we're done cleaning the data, we can start loading the data into a data model. And we can do that by clicking this button close and load. And when we do that, we're going to get this menu here where it's loading all the data. Now before I said there was 8.3 million rows of data or so. Well, it turns out that got reduced to about 5 million or so due to like there being so many duplicate values from those columns. So about 3 million duplicate rows got removed, basically. Now all we have to do is just wait until this is done loading. And I'll just fast forward um, to the part where we're done so we're not like waiting too long. Okay, so once we're done loading the data set, we might get this pop-up message like the query returned more data than it'll fit on the worksheet. And if that happens, um, you can just click on cancel and then we can go to the data connections here. Actually, we can just go to here, right click this and click load to. And then you want to click on the only create connection here and then add this data to the data model. Because since like there's over 5 million rows, it can't fit into that single worksheet of 1 million rows. So we have to add this to a data model. Um, so all you need is just only create connections and data model here. Click OK. And now it's loading the data model. Uh, which I'll just skip this. I'll just like skip this part since it's going to take a while. Okay, now it looks like the data has finally been loaded into the data model. And if we wanted to check, out, check it out in a pivot table, right? We can go to the... Um, power pivot window here that's up in the data tab as well click on it and we get this table here with all the um, all the data rows and columns and then we can click on pivot table you can add it to like a new worksheet or existing worksheet I'll just do a new worksheet and we have the pivot table here and the table here and we can put in the borough, we can do something like borough name here as a row. If you want to look at the crime for each borough. And then we can look at the offense level here for each borough as a count. And if we formatted this nicely. As a number. Yeah, it's like a number with the commas. We can see that there are a total of 5.27 million crimes in count of like well reported crimes and of those 5.7 million Staten Allen has a lease is excluding the null values while men while Brooklyn has the most now what I've shown you is the best way to load large data sets into Excel even though we have a way for Excel to handle large amounts of data we still shouldn't use spreadsheet tools as a database your performance will be affected by the share size of, of the data and your data will not be secured. It is best to use a database like SQL for these type of situations, which is a super important technical skill for data analysts to have. If you're interested in watching some SQL videos, then check out this video I uploaded last week where I try to solve this medium level SQL data analyst interview question from Google. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.